In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us answer the question, has everything changed in the stock market or has nothing changed? The entire video is being recorded after the close on Friday, October 28th. Earlier this week, the S&P 500 cleared that 3,800 level that we talked about in last week's video and not shockingly, closed right around 3,900 on Friday at 3,901, but below that 3,915-ish level. It's been a strong move thus far. Probably fair to say after reviewing the charts this week that not only is 4,139-ish possible, probably should put 4,200 on that radar of possibility as well. One of the strengths of using a weight of the evidence approach is it allows you to look at things using different tools and from different perspectives really to see if you're missing anything. So this bullet point here is the topic of this week's video. How much evidence do we have in hand today that supports the low being in place versus a low being in place? Article from the Financial Times dated October 22nd. You would think if the average retail investor had lost 44% year to date, and you would think when we ask and answer the question, how many years dating back to 1928 have we seen a loss of 10% or greater in the stock market and a loss of 10% or greater in the bond market? Answer, it's only happened one time this year. And you would think with one day moves like this and one day moves like this, that intuitively we should be open to the final low being in place at some point point, a tremendous opportunity is going to present itself. And as we covered in detail in last week's video, from a historical perspective, wouldn't be shocking for the market to bottom around 3,500, an area that it's already visited intraday. And looking at average and median outcomes, if a recession is in the cards, wouldn't be shocking to get down below 3,000. Thus, historically, if the move that we're experiencing in the present day is a counter trend rally, history says there could be significant downside risk. But history also tells us that the market may have put in its final low. Now, we don't cover Ichimoku clouds very often in these videos. It's a tool that's been in our secondary toolkit for a long, long time, and it can be extremely helpful in situations very, very similar to what we're experiencing in 2022. And it's fair to say that the dot-com bear market here, the financial crisis bear market here, and the look that we have in the present day thus far are the most concerning on your screen. All things being equal, green is better than red. So we'll use the cloud to compare the present day to this bear market this bear market, and to the inflation bear market in the 1970s to see what we can learn. This is where the S&P 500 peaked in early 1973. It didn't find a bottom until late 1974. Then there was a retest, and then the market pushed significantly higher. And notice along the way between point A and point B down here, there were some significant and relatively violent counter trend rallies. Now we look at the indicators tied to the cloud, they look intimidating and confusing, but it's really relatively simple and we'll try to make it as simple as possible. Bearish odds increase when this lagging green span here drops below price as it did here before the market peaked and as it did here soon after the peak. Bearish odds also increase when price drops below the cloud as it did here relatively early in the downturn. Concerns increase even more when the cloud flips from green to red as it did here, still in relatively close proximity to the high here. And if you're a stock market bull, all things being equal, you would prefer to see price above this red line here. We don't have it here. We drop below red here as well. And the fifth major item is blue dropping below red as it did here and as it did here. You can see for the remainder of the bear market, blue stays below red. So how do things look in the present day? Better or worse are about the same relative to these bullet points over here. 
is the S&P 500 as of Thursday, October 27th. We will show cloud charts during Friday's session as well. And we know bearish odds increase when the lagging span here drops below price. We have that. We have that on Thursday still below. Price dropping below the cloud, that has happened too, and we're still below the cloud. The weekly cloud here flips from green to red, so we can check this box as well. And price drops below red here, here, and here. Think of this as a mini weight of the evidence system. The more boxes you can check, the more concerned we become. And we can check the blue below red box too. Happens up here relatively early in 2022. And since then, we've stayed below. Thus, in terms of the bearish bullet points, we're batting five for five. You can check all of these boxes in the present day. And keep in mind, one of our bullet points is the weekly span changing from green to red. And you can see on your screen here, going back to 1995, that's relatively rare. We have it in the present day. Didn't happen at all between 1995 and the peak in 2000. Thus, we have the bearish look in the present day, similar to the rare bearish look that we had in the 70s. And to help us answer that question, does it look more like a counter trend move or a low relative to the low? We really want to know, what does it look like using the cloud after the low? So here's the major low in 1974. This is a retest of that low, a successful retest. Upper right hand corner of your screen. Bullish odds increase when green, the lagging span, retakes price as it did here in 1974 before the market made the low and before the successful retest. Second item, we'd like to see price above red. In this case, between this point here and this point here, that never happens. So this is the first time we can check that box here late in 1974, early in 1975. Similar situation here. Blue stayed below red until this point here after the major low and after the successful retest. Remember, it was bearish when price moved below the cloud here. It's bullish when you retake the cloud. So we can check this box. And just as it was concerning when the cloud flipped from green to red, it's encouraging when it flips back from red to green. Check that box as well. All of it in close proximity to the major low. What we're working towards here is this. The bearish signals that we've seen in the present day that we've already covered are the same bearish signals that were seen in the 1973-74 bear market. Does that apply to this period and this period? And maybe more importantly, was the cloud helpful here and here? And if so, how does the present day compare to this period down here and this period down here? And since we just covered all of this in detail and all of this in detail, we'll move a little bit more rapidly in the next two cases. 1999 to 2003, S&P 500 peaks in the spring of the year 2000 up here has a bottom in October of 2002, and then a retest in the spring of 2003. All of the bearish boxes that we have in the present day, you can check up here. So this period looks similar to what we've already seen in 2022. And very, very similar to the major bottom in the 1973-74 bear market, the same boxes were checked in this case. Green above price in here. Price above red here and here. Blue above red right in this area here. Price never gets to the other side of the cloud during the entire bear market. That doesn't happen until here after the successful retest. So we can check this box as well. And the cloud never turns green during the entire bear market. And we can check that box as well after the major low here. Similar situation, the major peak in 2007, 2008, all of these boxes were checked just as we've checked them in 2022. How about the major low here? This looks like a major low in real time. It's a massive counter trend move here. Doesn't end until early 2009 on the daily chart. These are all weekly charts. 
and then there's a huge drawdown before the low on the daily chart that occurs on March 9th of 2009. So let's go through the boxes again. Green above price. You can see in here, green is never above price until this point here, telling us to keep an open mind about a reversal occurring sometime in the future. Price above red. From this point here to this point here, price is below red. This is the first cross here in quite some time. Similar situation here, blue above red. Blue drops below red here. Blue stays below red the entire time until this point here in 2009 after the major low. How about price above the cloud? Price stays below the cloud from early 2008 here, never even makes a run at the cloud, which is potential resistance, until clearing it here in 2009 after the major low. And finally, the cloud is red during the entire bear market and eventually flips over to green here. Let's cover one other case in detail because it may be applicable to the present day. We've covered the 1962 case several times this year. It does have some very similar characteristics to the present day. You've got a low here in June and you've got a retest in October. And then from that retest low in late October, you basically go straight up into year end. And from this low here, we've basically been going straight up. And just to review, the scoring system that we built is based on trying to discern between a failed bear market rally attempt and a major stock market low by studying 1957, 62, 66, 70, 73, 82, 87, 01, 02, 08, 09, and 2020. So we just said there's a lot of similarities here in terms of the calendar and the plunge. So what can we learn relative to the cloud in the 1962 case? Which is really a different way of looking at the same concepts. It's just part of a weight of the evidence approach. What we're really trying to do is understand, is there anything using the cloud that's telling us something that we don't already know or is it confirming what we already know? In the present day case, on October 27th of this week, we were 11 trading days removed from the lowest closing low in 2022. If you count forward 11 trading days from the low, the retest low in October of 1962, that would take you to November 7th of 1962. Thus, November 7th of 1962 is similar to October 27th of this year. This is what the cloud looks like, the weekly cloud on November 7th, 1962. It really doesn't look that much different than the present day, telling us to keep an open mind about something similar happening in the present day. And if that happens, that would be a good thing, because look what happened next in the 1962 case. So using the bullish trend concepts that we just covered, the chart on November 7th of 1962 from a cloud perspective really doesn't look that great. But if we walk forward to November 30th of 1962, some good things start to happen. Green above price here, that's bullish from a probability perspective. Blue goes above red here, that's bullish. Price moves above red, that's a good thing. And you can see we're on the cusp of retaking the cloud. You're not quite there yet, but you're very, very close. You're at least making a run at it. The only thing that we don't have on November 30th is the cloud is still red out here. Thus, it might be helpful to know, using our objective scoring system, what percentage of the bullish boxes in our scoring system could be checked on November 30th, 1962 with this greatly improved look off of this low and this retest relative to the percentage of the boxes that can be checked in the present day. And that would speak to the strength of the trend here relative to the strength of the trend here. And from a cloud perspective on October 27th, so this is the present day chart, we can still check all five of these boxes. Green below price, price below the cloud, cloud is still red, price is below red, and blue is below red. How about the scores? They're significantly different. On November 30th, 1962, 83% of the boxes roughly could be checked. Present day, 
We're still down at a low 6.5, a very low 6.5. However, remember we said that November 7th was similar to the present day, not November 30th. So it would be helpful to compare the score on November 7th to the present day. But before we do that, let's just look at the chart on October 27th. How many of these bullish boxes can we check? Green above price? No. Price above red? No. Blue above red? No. Price above the cloud? Once again, no. And finally, has the cloud in the present day flipped from red to green? Once again, the answer is no. Batting 0 for 5. Well below the Mendoza line. So admittedly, this is not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison because the rally is much further along here. It's better for us in the present day to compare October 27th to a similar point 11 trading days after the low, which as we already know is November 7th of 1962. So how do the scores compare? The 1962 case is still quite a bit better. 37.2% relative to 6.5%. So in the present day, we've got some work to do. So if we compare both periods, 11 trading days after the retest low, the 1962 case checks almost six times more bullish boxes in our scoring system relative to Thursday of this week. Not that much better on Friday. This number did jump up to 9%. So it is improving and it is moving in the right direction. So how is this helpful? It's basically telling us if good things are going to happen in 2022 between now and year end, these numbers will come up. They need to come up. And they most likely will rise relatively rapidly as they did in the 1962 case. Having said that, the chart in front of us is still quite a bit weaker than the chart at a similar point in 1962. And we're way behind this score from November 30th. So we'll see how things play out. That's the whole purpose of the model. It helps us understand how much progress are we making relative to differentiating characteristics between failed bear market rally attempts and major stock market lows. The 1962 case has some similarities, but has some significant differences. This is a waterfall decline. You don't really start to fall rapidly until after April 1st in here so you fall rapidly in April and really in May and then you make a low here in June that's quite a bit different than we have in the present day in the present day we peak early in the year here and then work our way down to the lowest low in October so this has more of a binary waterfall and sharp reversal look and there's a good reason for that and it's tied to history 1962 is a Cuban Missile Crisis, and it basically was solved on October 22nd, 1962. Not shockingly, the stock market bottomed the next day, here. So your binary risk-off event has some type of potentially binary solution on October 23rd. So our key takeaways here are things improved rapidly in 1962 telling us we should be open to things improving rapidly in 2022. Our main driver in 2022, inflation. That's really the furthest thing from a binary event. It's highly unlikely that CPI is going to go from 8% down to 2% in one day. Having said that, the Fed could create some type of binary event with a pivot next week. We have a Fed meeting next week. It remains to be seen how they're going to handle things. The Fed has a statutory mandate for price stability. It's very, very difficult with the numbers that we received on Friday. Core PCE inflation was up year over year and still well above the Fed's target of 2%. And we really have to ask ourselves, is the Fed really going to take the Jackson Hole speech and just throw it in the trash can? Probably the key takeaway here, the third point, major point from Jackson Hole, quoting here from the text of the speech. That brings me to the third lesson, which is that we must keep at it until the job is done. He's basically saying our aim is to avoid that outcome by acting with resolve now. They don't want to make the same mistakes that were made in the 1970s and early 1980s. 
There's a reason why Powell said the clock is ticking or why he has said it several times. Because the mistakes in the 70s and early 80s were tied to letting inflation expectations become unanchored. Once they become unanchored, economic decisions are based on inflation and it becomes somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy or a negative feedback loop. When we've been comparing these periods, we've been using weekly clouds. Can we learn anything from the daily cloud on November 7th relative to the daily cloud in the present day? So this is November 7th, 11 trading days after the successful retest, which is similar to October 27th. Here are our bullish boxes that we want to check. Green above price, yes. Price above the cloud, yes. Blue above red, yes. Price above red, yes. Cloud red to green, yes. Thus, 11 trading days after the low, the daily cloud chart, ready to win a batting title, five for five. How does that compare to Thursday of this week? We do have some improvement. Green, just now crossing above price, that's a good thing. Blue above red, that's a good thing. Price is above red, that's a good thing. We're missing two key ingredients even on the shorter term time frame or the daily chart. We're not really close to getting to the other side of the cloud. And you can see the cloud is not close to flipping. This is what it looks like when it gets close to flipping. Narrow, narrow, broad. The width of this cloud tells us we have a strong downtrend in place. And this area up here is potential strong resistance and this area in here is potential strong resistance. This would be weaker resistance from a probability perspective, but the cloud in general acts as resistance. So the scores are significantly different and the look of the daily cloud, some significant differences. And if we go back to the weekly chart, this is potential resistance. So could the counter trend rally or the rally have further run? Absolutely, positively, yes. In fact, it wouldn't be shocking if price came up near 4,200. This would be a key level in terms of possible resistance. A similar situation here, if we look at the daily chart, this area here, 3980, 3008, which is basically where we closed on Friday. We closed at 3901, all the way up to 3954 are areas of possible resistance. We say possible, why? Because it's very possible that price is going to blow right through them. We'll learn something either way. Now we have to move much more quickly. So you can use all of the same bearish concepts on the weekly and daily charts and all of the same bullish concepts and pause your video player and analyze these charts. This is the daily cloud for the 10 year yield. It's checking bullish boxes across the board. In fact, this is potential support here at the red line. The weekly chart in terms of the cloud this is October 28th at 3 p.m. So this is this Friday, about an hour before the close. Full bore bullish look with one caveat. We are extended here from the cloud. So we could get a counter trend rally that easily could come back to let's say a 10 year at 3.4%. And if that happened, it's very easy to envision the stock market rallying further, even if it's just a counter trend rally. But there's nothing here that says the trend in rates is anything other than firmly up at the moment. Here's some headlines from Friday's session. Do they really align with the theory that the Fed is about to pivot or that rates have peaked? Two-year yield on Friday, three o'clock, positive. And on the Bloomberg terminal on Friday, there's an article talking about hopes for a Fed pivot have fizzled. Now that's to be determined. We'll have to see what Powell says next week. This is a little blurb about Friday's session. Defensive consumer staples divided by the S&P 500 weekly Friday session, 1020 a.m. Full bore bullish, favoring defensive staples. Defensive staples lagging this week? No, killing SPY. Outperformed by 3%. This is indicative of a strong trend. And if there is a counter trend move, this is indicative of an area that could be strong support, potential support. The thicker the cloud, the stronger the trend. This is potential support, we bounced. This is oversold, potential support at the red, we bounced. Thick cloud, Bitcoin weekly, 
Could we rally back to the cloud into this area here, here, or here, or even here? Absolutely, positively, yes. But right now, any move looks like a counter trend move within a firmly established weekly downtrend. Rallying back to the red line is also a possibility, and that's a relatively big move, but it still would look like a counter trend move. NASDAQ weekly during Friday's session, full bore bearish look. If we get above the red line here, if you get a reversal like this, so this would be an overbought look until proven otherwise in a downtrend, and this is your reversal signal when you close back below red. So absolutely could have some room to run. This could be resistance, this could be resistance, and the cloud could act as resistance. But not checking any bullish boxes here. Similar situation with the Dow, one of the leaders. Green below price, blue below red. We do have price above red. That's one good thing. Price is below the cloud and the cloud is red. Potential resistance up in this area here. NASDAQ 100, think QQQ, checking all of the bearish boxes, none of the bullish boxes. NYSE weekly, green below price, blue below red, price below red, below the cloud, the cloud is red. Everything that we just said applies to small caps, Friday, October 28th. This is a nice little rally here. We do have a small position in IWM, very small. I'd like to see what happens here. It looks like a retest of this line. Like all these other charts, there's absolutely positively room to run in here, even within the context of a counter trend move. This is IWM's cloud at 3.11 p.m., very, very similar look. S&P 500 daily cloud, the quick takeaway is these areas here could act as potential resistance, basically between 40.50 and 39.00. We closed Friday at 39.01. Here's the look nine minutes before the close relative to those same lines. We're also, you can see, running up against the cloud that can act as potential resistance. But you can see clearing the cloud is well within the realm of possibility, even within the context of a counter trend move. S&P 500 weekly Friday morning, checking all of the bearish boxes still, checking none of the bullish boxes. That may change, but it hasn't changed yet. The baseline is a form of potential resistance. It comes in at 39.08 cloud could act as potential resistance as well. If we get above 3908 or above the red line here, this little blurb right here would apply. This is the look on the last counter trend rally. US dollar this week checking all of the bullish boxes, none of the bearish boxes. Counter trend moves as we discussed last week, 100% normal and to be expected. The one caveat would be a counter trend move could be fairly significant here. This is an extended look on this trend. This was major potential support on the way down. It didn't hold. Now it would become potential resistance if we come back up. Similar situation with this entire band here. Full bore, bearish look on the cloud. Amazon Weekly Friday. Google, green below price, blue below red. Price below red, cloud red. Weekly price below the cloud, five for five. Microsoft, five for five. Netflix up into this massive gap that could act as potential resistance and also near a downward sloping 200 day. If the Fed was about to pivot, most likely that would be a good time to buy bonds. Intermediate term treasury ETF full bore bearish look on the weekly Friday, October 28th. Doesn't look like a market that thinks rates have peaked. As always, we're talking about the chart in front of us. Can it change? Absolutely, positively, yes. Read this little blurb here. So proven otherwise, it applies to this look here. Daily IEI. Really nothing particularly bullish about this look. Same principles apply. Same thing with IEF daily. This is Friday, 11.34 a.m. Eastern. It finished even worse than this, down even more. It's a constructive look for junk bonds near the major low in stocks 2009. A constructive look with the cloud junk bonds weekly near the major low that occurs in early February of 2016 in the S&P 500. 
We don't have that constructive look now. This is a full bore bearish look on the weekly as of Friday, October 28th. Can it improve? Absolutely, positively, yes. Can it improve very, very soon? Yes, it hasn't improved yet. The trends here, eight day moving average out to the 138 look like a market that believes interest rates have peaked. The answer is no at this point. TLT has not even cleared its downward sloping 20 day in blue here. Daily cloud here, full bore bearish, checks all of the bearish boxes, none of the bullish. Similar situation here, can't check any bullish boxes, check all of the bearish boxes during Friday's session. Credit markets, history says the credit markets typically bottom in unison or before the stock market. They're not convinced at this point. Even one of your market leaders can only check one bullish box on the weekly chart. This area up here will learn something represents possible resistance. If the Fed was about to pivot and interest rates had peaked, would we expect XLE to be pushing, knocking on the door of a new weekly high here? No, we wouldn't, but that's what we have. This looks like a counter trend move within the context of an existing uptrend. We can check all of the bullish boxes on the weekly chart. Would consider adding to a relatively small stake in XLE if it can break out in the daily chart. It has not done so yet. We'll see how it plays out. Here's another chart. This does not look like a market or ratio that thinks inflation has peaked, interest rates have peaked, or the Fed is about to pivot. And that's really not an opinion. That's just the way the market works. Tesla weekly, five for five. Want to keep an open mind about a major low being in place? We are seeing some weakness here. We covered this in detail a few weeks ago. Here's the look of the ratio near the major low in the stock market, October of 1974. If the present day chart looks more like this, we'd be more convinced. It really doesn't yet. Some weakness, but nothing significant. Blue plunges below green, drops quickly below pink. We're well above green at the moment and well above pink and well above this area of possible support. Same questions. Do the charts on your screen, monthly, weekly, look like a market that believes the Fed is about to pivot, interest rates have peaked, and inflation is under control? Had a really, really big week in the stock market, so SPY must have demolished SP low volatility. Not the case. SPY during Friday's session, late 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time, underperforming by over 1%. Value stocks, one of the stronger ETFs on the planet, especially U.S. equity ETFs, near potential resistance here. We'll learn something either way, not making any assumptions about what happens next on any of these charts. The commentary always relates to the facts in front of us. You know, SPY must have killed defensive staples this week, right? No, underperformed by 2%. This is still a concerning white space look. We have a wide range of intermediate term charts, weekly charts, telling us the trend is still down at the moment. It's always good to remember the worst case scenarios. We just showed that the weekly cloud charts look similar to the early stages of the 1973-74 bear market. The early stages of the dot-com bust bear market in the early stages of the financial crisis bear market. And we also showed that there's not really many periods at all using weekly clouds that share similar characteristics. The average duration of these bear markets, 692 calendar days. Our current bear market, under 365. Average S&P 500 decline, peak to trough, 51%. Hypothetically, we experience something similar in the present day, it's possible within the realm of historical possibility that this bear market ends in October or November of next year, a year from now, and the S&P drops all the way down to 2300-ish. Always good to understand worst case type scenarios. Can't emphasize this enough. If a major low is in place, the data will improve and we're happy to adjust. Covered this VIX data last week. 
It also tells us to keep an open mind about more downside in the months ahead. And as we discussed in last week's video, we'll be smoothing out the fees for the next two quarters. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us via email. Now, given the circumstances, we're going to focus on client accounts. So for what may be a relatively short period of time, maybe a few months, we're currently not accepting new clients. If you're already in the process of becoming a client, none of this applies to you. If and when we open things back up, we'll cover it in a weekly video, and this will be removed from the website. You'll notice in this week's video, we're basically looking at very, very similar concepts that we review every week in these weekly videos, the same weight of the evidence approach. The daily and the weekly clouds simply allow us to look at the same concepts from a different perspective. Why do we want to do that? Because we want to be able to answer this question. Do the facts, the observable evidence on the weekly and daily cloud charts align with or contradict all of the other evidence that we track? The answer as of Friday's close is un questionably they align with it all singing off the same hymnal at this point cleared 3800 knocking on the door of 3915 very very possible that even within the context of a counter trend move that's going to fail we could go all the way to 4200 we discussed these levels last week it's not necessarily a bearish view whether you're bullish or bearish depends on time frames there's no question the short to intermediate time frame has flipped from bearish to bullish over the past two weeks. We don't have a lot of evidence that any other time frame has flipped as of this recording. Here's the first paragraph from a Bloomberg article, Friday, October 28th, after the latest inflation data was released. Take note of the Senate structure here and the choice of words. Two key inflation gauges closely monitored by the Federal Reserve posted firm increases in reports Friday, underscoring persistent pressures that will keep the central bank on a course of steep interest rate hikes. That will keep. I'd say the odds are pretty good that these reporters contacted someone at the Fed prior to writing a first paragraph in an article like that. May or may not be the case, but that's a pretty firm and definitive statement. And that paragraph would align very, very closely with the message that was delivered by Powell at Jackson Hole. You can pause your video player here. Counter trend moves. Very, very common in bear markets. Financial crisis bear market. Counter trend move of 24% fully retraced. Not making any definitive statements that this is a counter trend move. The data that we have in front of us today, it still looks like a counter trend move. That can change over time. Price action looks excellent. It looked very, very good in March of 08. It looked very, very good in July of 08. A lot of technical data looks excellent here in November of 2008. We rally into early January 2009. We go from 900 on the S&P 500 down to that Damien low in March of 2009 of 666. That's a big move. Covered these topics last week. They're not relevant right now, but they could become relevant in the coming months. As we covered last week, the worst for corporate earnings probably lies ahead. This one really needs to be amended. The long-term trends remain very weak. Short and intermediate term trends have improved significantly. Is it possible the longer term trends will flip? Absolutely, positively, yes. If so, all of the charts that we covered this week will change in a significant way. And that may happen, hasn't happened yet. As we mentioned at the top of the video, there's never been a year going back to 1928 where the bond market and the stock market both lost over 10% in the same year. These are very rare circumstances. The average U.S. portfolio, retail portfolio, was down 44%. If the charts that we covered this week improve, and they may, the only way that we're going to be able to recognize that is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. 
The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.